Hello everybody, welcome back to One Buy, Two Sells, where we talk about all things stock market related, financing, uh, keeping the overhead and life low, saving money, um, basically just how to utilize your, par ch your pie chart in life to um, give you the best outcome um, for your future and your family's future. So, I've been doing a lot of... Um, uh, video watching regarding dividend stocks. Uh, what is it? PPC Ian. He's a good one. Really enjoy him. Um, of course, got the Ricky Gutierrez, uh, Patrick Wyland. Uh, there's other ones out there. Um, everybody has their own strategy. Uh, I've been I've been r really studying since the beginning of this year. I started getting into crypto first because my dad gave me some crypto for Christmas. Um, and that's what kind of sparked um, sparked my desire to kind of get back into it. Um, I've had an IRA since I was uh, 17 years old. Um, I ended up cashing it out uh, about five years ago for some reasons that uh, I may or may not get into uh, throughout this uh, channel. But uh, I just want to come here and talk to you guys. No script, nothing written. Um, I have a general idea of what I want to talk about, but um, I just kind of want to let you guys know my daily progress and how I'm doing it. Because I'm doing it with the small small accounts. I've had to learn what brokerages you to use, how to save money with brokerages, um, basically how to keep things really simple. And I think I'm carving out a good way for a beginner to start day trading, swing trading. I don't do any shorting. Um, um, the closest shorting I do would be like uh, buying DGAS or like a bearish um, ETF. Um, but no actual bar borrowing of shares. So let's just start with today. I put my alarm clock at quarter to six because I need to actually do it earlier because I like to be there right, I like to have everything done and sat down at my desk at six, five minutes before six because at six o'clock sometimes the after hour stuff just starts going crazy right at six o'clock and uh, with one of my brokerages, Robinhood, they'll let you trade from six to like three. Um, East Coast time, or sorry, West Coast time, Pacific. So, I try and only do one trade a day. I try and find the best possible entry, and that my I do have a goal in mind of what I'm trying to rip off of it. Um, more like ten to twenty-five cents. And you guys got to remember, if someone is going in with a hundred thousand dollars, let's say you guys at thirteen bucks. Going in, you guys, with hundred thousand dollars with a share price at thirteen bucks is eighty five hundred shares. If you go make ten cents on the share for that order, you're making a thousand bucks. So when people say that they're making all this money, it's really not that difficult. The difficult part is having the capital amount to do it, and having the understanding and ability and um, practice to to do it. But I mean, when they say they make a thousand bucks, if I would have had the same money today that they're dip dipping in with, I would have made, well, let's just cut that back. If I used a thousand shares today, I would have made 140 bucks. Because um, I made 14 cents on my one play with you guys. That's, I, I went in with a goal to cut it it wasn't a set goal, but it was between 10 and 15 cents. So when I get to 14, I just uh, locked in profits, shut down my computer, and walked away. So when people say they're making all this money, just remember they're ripping 10, 25 cents, 50 cents a dollar on just huge um, positions. I don't think anyone explains it very well. So, I, I got 
all hand-me-down stuff. I mean, I'm trading in the Dark Ages, pretty much. No, not really, but we're getting close for the year we're in now. Um, so, on you guys today, what was it doing? Uh, you guys, right before it opened, you guys um, kind of crashed down. And then right when it opened at 6.30, it started going up. And it went back down again. It hit the 200 SMA. Popped up a little bit. Popped back down. And after that second pop of the MS, on the SMA, which was around $13.30, it ran all the way up to 14 bucks. And then dipped down. I think it closed at 12.81. So I bought 25 shares at... I didn't mark it and slipped a little bit. I did 21, 25 shares at 13.63.62. And I wanted it at 13.60, so it was a two cent slippage, which is quite a bit. So then I bought, when it went back down a little bit, because it usually always does, that's why it's very important to average down or average up. It, uh, Dip down a little bit, and I bought 10 shares at 10:35, or I mean 12:35, 13:35. So basically, I had 35 shares, average cost of 13.58. Right, just down. So 35 shares at 13.58. So. I put a limit sell at 13.72. Right after I, that was all the shares I could do at that time. So I just set my order, and sure enough, it rose all the way up to 14 bucks, and I dipped back down and again, closed at 12.81. But you know, I really, I don't care. I could have went to 60 bucks. You know, you just can't kick yourself if it keeps running. Now, if it's a big runner and you know it's running, yeah, just kind of, kind of like a trailing stop loss. Like, click it off if it, if you know that's going up, put it low. If it keeps going, take it off, put it up. You know, use that trailing stop loss, loss type of deal to uh, let your runner run. You know, you can do that. Not, not an issue with that. Cut your losses quick and let your runners run. And cutting your losses if you really know what you're doing and you really have a good theory it shouldn't be too many times that the thing just totally blows your theory out of the water so I mean don't be afraid of cutting losses part of the game as just as much as stocks stocks don't move li you know linearly they move up and down and um, you know you're gonna have losses up and down it's all you know it's just about how you uh, navigate the terrain so I sold a bunch of stuff because I bought a bunch of stuff Friday because it was all red. So, I mean, I bought like I bought a share of the spy um, at like 287, 286 or something, 286, 78. Um, so I bought some Vanguard high yield ETF. Just I bought some AMD at 29.50, um, and then I sold it all today. I mean, you know, I may have made a couple bucks profit on that. Just Sometimes I don't like, like let my money to sit when I know there's huge deals going on. I'll just put it in for the night, the next day, and then I'll just sell and make a couple bucks. You know, I don't have a lot of capital, so I'm just kind of basically practicing as I'm building up my capital. So when the time comes that I can dip in with large capital, I'm already going to have that uh, comfortability with uh, how to do it and being in the market. Um, that seems is seeming to work well for me. Um, what else? What else happened today? Yeah, you guys was just a choppy little thing, and I had a bunch of screens going on, and I was trying to, I was listening to some of the, the day trading people with their hot stocks, their penny stocks, which I don't usually tra trade. I have before, but I don't, but I was just kind of listening to a bunch of people, I had a bunch of screens up, and really, right now, unless it's a dividend stock that I put in a separate stash account, my stash account has all my dividends big dividend stocks in, in it and I don't touch it. 
I get that it's a dollar a month, and that kind of tripped me off. I almost, excuse me, canceled it. But I've already grown it quickly to where I'm, I'm getting at least three bucks. So that dividend cash just goes right into my cash portion of my stash. So, I mean, even if I don't touch it for the rest of my life with what's in there, there's only like 500 bucks in there, but I don't have to mess with it anymore. Nothing to get deducted, just the dividends. Um, go right into my cash portion and that's where the dividend or that's where the monthly fee is taken out so it's nice having an account that you do have fees from that you can grow it and then forget it but keep growing it and because I have multiple accounts and uh, you know my dividend account I'm growing for life I'm just putting money in to get a set amount about right now I have 11 companies good companies researched them um, and I just buy when one's down, I look at them. So if one's up like plus 7%, I don't necessarily put money in that. I'll look for one that's kind of weaker, but that's not to say that I won't add to a position that's already up. Um, just probably only about 10% of the time. Otherwise, I'm just putting in that different values to uh, you know, get that stock at a cheaper price. And, and they're all good dividend, long-term history, good balance, good, you know, they're good stocks um, that should last at least my lifetime and my whole portfolio is being willed to my daughter so that's another plan for me so um, I started day trade I started trading in general even though I had an IRA when I was 17 I really consider myself starting into trading when I was 36 last year I know that most people retire you can retire between 63 and 70 or something like that so I'm just assuming I have, and I just turned 37 a few months back, months back. So 37 plus 30 is 67. Sounds about a good time to retire um, late, but from the normal person's perspective, 67. That's kind of my goal to have at least at least a thousand bucks a month coming in from dividends, if not one and a half to two thousand a month coming in from dividends, plus my social security plus any other avenues of income that I can generate um, from now till then. Uh, so basically the one play on Gush added once to my position and added it again to 25 and the 10 so I ended up with selling 35 UGAS shares with 14 cents on the share profit. And again doesn't sound like much, but if that was a thousand shares instead of 35 shares, that would have been 140 bucks real quick. And I can really, it's really getting easy for me to rip 10 cents off of you guys. Um, I mean, I've been able to do it the last week every day. So I'll just take one trade a day, even though you can go, you know, depending on the day, sometimes it op offers opportunities a few times, but. Um, there's usually that one good entry point um, for the trade, you know, that one sell-off bounces off the, you know, the SMA or one of the VWAPs, and then you can just tell that it instantly kind of starts to run. So if you can find that good entry point, you know, let it run up a little bit um, to get direction, and then, you know, go in. You don't go all in. I don't go all in. I, I, I like the 30% rule, 30%, 30%, 30%. So put your 30% in to get your skin in the game. And then if it goes down more, put your other 30%, as long as you're confident in your theory. And then maybe as it continues to rise up, put that last amount in. You're going to have your whole position averaged in to a nice little number. And then sell when... Um, uh, put a limit order in to sell um, with your percentage gains that you want for the day one, two, three, four, five percent. So um, that's, you know, that's your call. But I like to, I might, mark, mar I might market order my stuff in to get it in quick. There might be a little bit of slippage, especially with using Robinhood for that. Um, I use U Stock Trade too if I have to do a bunch of day trades. So, right, my face is like super dry getting into the shower. And uh, so, there's a, there's a 
Caterpillar. They're building over here. It's a Caterpillar. So I own stock in Caterpillar. I got. So I just see stuff, up, brands all over the place. And, you know, I can tell you the ticker. Oh, cat. That's about what? 115, 29 trading. Um, so. Um, I lost my train of thought, but basically, right now I'm just practicing and um, consistently, and I'm just trading you guys and D guys. I mean, one day I made oh, like 35 bucks a share on D guys. Um, I'm just, I'm just really, really focusing on natural gas with D guys and you guys, and I'm knowing it intimately. So I can easily start, start with 10 cents, just easily go to rip 10 cents a day, 10 cents, walk away, get a little bit better, 15 cents, walk away, build up my capital so I can dip in with more money while I'm practicing, see, see how many times that I don't um, make my goal on small positions, and then by the time I have $15,000 saved up and I have this consistency track record, and I can make 100 bucks a day, you know, all I have to do is work part time at my job. Um, to bring in more capital and then you know maybe put half the capital I make in um, you know household needs stuff that I need like work money you know household income stuff and then the other half just reinvest just like I reinvest with um, my dividends um, like my stash account I just let that snowball grow I just put I just keep putting money into it the fees paid the dividends are reinvested, it's just its own separate contained entity. So um, I, I just wanted to get on and kind of talk about my day. Um, I just have a crummy computer I work with. Um, actually downstairs I have a Mac with the good uh, Thinker Swim, not like that app version, like the real, you know, the, the good one that most people use. Um, I have a like the brokers use on the New York Stock Exchange. You know, I need to get a little um, handle thing so I can just. So, you know, I might be listening to something on my phone with the headphones. I got a chart going here and there. I got like natural gas might be up there, and then I got um, the other two broken up on the screen downstairs. And I just sit back. I try and sit back for at least an hour after the market opens, unless there's some crazy play going on, and I just kind of wait for that. Um, perfect entry. Um, I believe as Warren Buffett said that the stock market is about uh, the transfer of wealth from the impatient to the patient and I just try and um, use that philosophy every time I sit down to trade because it's so true. Especially looking back in hindsight like oh man if I just would have waited an hour or a half hour or 15 minutes I'd look at that perfect entry it's, it's clear as day. And just sit back, don't try and track 30 different stocks going on. I mean, at least if you're a beginner like I am, and I'm just, I'm trying to make money. Um, not only for the long term, I'm getting I'm in crypto. I do own some crypto um, outside, like in a cold wallet. Um, I have a cash, a high yield savings cash account, um, savings account at my bank. I. I've been working on um, growing a few other little streams of that avenues of income, and you know even if it's a few bucks, just having that stream of income, you don't have to do anything, and you know it makes you feel pretty good. Um, this is just stuff I wish I would have done a long time ago. Um, and again, I started when I was 36. Not, it's pretty bad, but um, again, I have 30 years till I'm 67. Approximately 30 years from 67 from when I started investing hardcore, and I think in 30 years, if I work hard, um, I should definitely be able to uh, obtain my uh, goal. You know, having an IRA, one to two thousand a month for my dividends, Social Security, whatever is left of that, um, savings account, just straight cash and uh, high yield stuff. Um, and I keep my overhead in life low. I throw away a lot of stuff. You know, I might have a TV, a PS4, a bed, um, a dresser that I can kind of put everything in, shut the drawers. It's just real clean, clean looking. And I just get rid of stuff that I don't need. Because not only do I not have to pick it up and clean it up, it's just not there. It's out of my mind. 
and it lets me focus on other things. So I'm kind of like an OCD type person where I just can't shut my brain off. Um, so it just gives me peace of mind where I can just focus on a few things. The same, same goes for like with me trading you guys today and I was all over the place when I really should have just been hunkered down and I probably would have made more than just 14 cents on the share. Um, but again, that was my goal. My goal was around 10 to 15, so it was on the latter end. Um, and like I'm saying, if I can do little rips, you know, 10, I've, I've made dollars before on you guys swinging it and don't swing it. That's just another stupid thing. Don't swing it and don't hold it um, during the uh, natural gas report at 7.30 on Thursdays. So there's just little tr tricks and things you got to learn. Um, just start with small positions and just kind of learn so you're not losing a bunch of money. Um, everything you lose is just the cost of admission just so you start getting things really going. Uh, but the stock market and investing has really saved my life in a lot of ways. Um, I was on a bad road for a long time and uh, this really gives me something to uh, revert m um, my addictive ways towards. So. Um, I'm really bullish in life and bullish in general for the stock market and uh, very hopeful for the future and I uh, again I just uh, get rid of stuff I go to work I work hard I save money I don't buy stupid stuff my car is a piece of junk um, I don't care what people think of me I'm just trying to reach my goals and provide a better life for my daughter. I love finances. Finances. I love the medical field. And those are two things that I'm involved in. I'm just doing this for my daughter, for me, for something to do. I like teaching people. I'm by no means a teacher. I'm not going to sit here and sell you some course. I'm not going to tell you to smash the like button. I'm not going to tell you to, to subscribe. I, I mean, I just don't care. It'd be nice to make money on YouTube, but to me that just seems way too far-fetched, even though I know if people put your mind to it, um, things can get done. But but I would appreciate any of those things I said. I'm just not going to be the guy that's just like, oh, smashy, smashy, smashy that like button, do do do. That sounds stupid. We know what to do, okay? We're not children. We're in the New York Stock Exchange stock market. We don't need to like button. I don't know, that's just a pet peeve of mine. So, do what you want there. I'm really not a smoker either. I started smoking like in June. It's only been less than 90 days, but it's been helping me get through some stuff, so better than the alternative. Um, I want to thank you guys for your time. Again, I'm just going to come, I'm going to try and give you guys at least daily, or at least weekly, if not daily reports, what I trade. Like I said, if I'm in and out of a trade, it's going to be you guys or D guys, natural gas. That is all I'm trading for day trading. I want to get good at ripping five cents to five dollars out of that, you know? You guys is more expensive so you can get more gains, but you're gonna have to put up more capital to do so. It's a beautiful day here. I'm out here in the Pacific Northwest. It's beautiful out. I think I'll go edit this video. My and the videos are not flashy. I used to have a nice Mac when I sold my cousin and I sold a house when we were twenty three years old. Um, we got an amazing deal in downtown and we bought the house for $75,000 and sold it for $155,000 and we each got to walk away tax free, clear, cash, a little over $30,000 each. I reinvested in another house, I put $10,000 down, which right after that the market went down, things went upside down, I had to short sale the house, but um, I have had my dabble in real estate and uh, nowadays I just uh, I'm trying to keep my overhead in life low I just want to make money I just want to be happy I just want to be with my daughter and I just want to stay on the right path and do things right in life um, 
if any of this sounds uh, familiar to you and you want to go on this journey with me, I'm here to help. Comment if you'd like, um, just so we can, you know, talk and converse, and uh, hopefully we can all do this together. Uh, I, I love the community. I love finance. I love numbers. I love turning, you know, nothing into something. It's uh, very, very fulfilling. Very. So. That's about all I got today, but I just I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. All right.